friends, we're back. We're Black and Curious. I'm Kandrin. What up, what up? It is Deja. How you doing? Hello. If you've never been here before, welcome. We do a cross-section of pop culture in real life. Today, we are talking the reality TV reckoning. Lots of lawsuits been flying <laughs> to and fro. Lots of people been talking um, about their experience on reality TV. We know from the past that Nini, I think, well, who's it Nini? No, it's Bethany definitely that was talking about unionizing reality TV stars. Um, I think Nini may have opined on that too, maybe. Um, hmm. But either way, lots of chatter. So uh, I was listening to, I raised this topic candidly, and I was listening to an episode of the Bravo docket, and they were talking about this lawsuit that Caroline Manzo had filed based on her time on Ultimate Girls Trip, which we're never going to see. Um, mm -hmm. never. So basically, she alleges that Brand Brandy Glanville was just a menace and sexually assaulted her multiple times. They have a huge height difference with Brandy Glanville being, I think, six feet, close to six feet. Um, and Caroline Manzo being like five foot, five one, five two max. Um, and she basically said the staff fed this lady alcohol and let her harass Caroline. And they did eventually separate them, but they continued to film Brandy with some of the other women, I think Phaedra and Eva, and then kind of isolated almost Caroline and it's just like dude how are you going to do that and what I thought was really interesting and why Caroline's going to win is because they her lawyers really laid out a long history of Brandy being terrible and sexually assaulting and people right and there. abusive and she you know like I don't remember exactly what she did to Lisa Vanderpump, but she was terrible to her. She was terrible to Kim. She was like everybody <laughs> on Beverly Hills had a Brandy Glanville issue for the most part. Which is why she was no longer a part of that show. Correct. So mm -hmm. I think this is going to be interesting for what, how, uh, ultimate girls trip moves forward because it's like you're not going to be able to just take your most problematic people off of your shows and put them on ultimate girls trip and get a little bit more mileage out of them like mm -mm. Mm -mm. it ain't gonna fly and so, i think we saw that a little bit with ramona too because she was problematic on her season and also problematic on ultimate girls trip wasn't she on like two seasons of um because the I'm last doing. one that she was on with the, the Roni cast re reunited, she was okay. very tame. But I want to say that she was on another Ultimate Girls trip. Um, and then the one that you're talking about that Brandy was on, didn't that air? Wasn't that online? The she was on two. I think she was on a separate one. And I think she had some issues on that one, too. I think she was on a previous one. But the one with her and Caroline, I don't think has ever aired. And I don't think it ever will. So, okay, because the one that you're talking about that had Brandy, Eva, and Phaedra, that was on TV. I think they cut all the parts with Caroline out. Okay, so maybe that's what it was. Okay. Because I was like, that whole cast sounds familiar. I just don't remember seeing Caroline there. Okay, so maybe that's what it was. I, I didn't watch that season. So, anyways, her lawsuit has seems like it has a lot of teeth, especially with the basis of her having this background and we know brandy is terrible we've seen her be terrible for seasons and seasons on tv um leah mcsweeney is also she is suing andy cohen and i think the production company yeah i left it here for you um, mm -hmm. yeah i didn't get a chance to um watch this yet but why so... is she suing andy that don't make no sense that's like nini i think she for... sued him too or put him named him in her suit for favoritism Essentially saying that he, I think he, I think she's suing him in his capacity, but also like probably the production companies and everybody, you know, but um, mm -hmm. basically saying that Andy parties with the housewives, including, you know, doing um, party drugs with them. Ooh. And then based on who he likes, he gives special treatment to those housewives and that also that they prevented her from getting help for her alcoholism, which I thought was a stretch. That is a stretch. Because how stretch. can they prevent you from when you're not filming? What are you doing? And also, like, 
if they're filming your real life, allegedly, then you know, you can go get help. I feel like, see, the tone of, and I don't have, I didn't read either of these lawsuits completely, but the tone of Leah's lawsuit was a little bit different from the tone of Caroline's. Caroline's showed like a practice and behaviors of them being terrible. Whereas Leah's was like, it felt almost like she wasn't really taking responsibility for herself. And like, part of this feels to me like, you want to be on reality TV, but this is the gig, you know? Not to say you have to drink, you don't. Clearly, Kyle didn't um, this season, which we'll get around to later, but, like, <laughs> you know... It, Kyle's new drug is women, so... Or violence. Yeah, well... <laughs> well... Important to the girls. I'm just saying, like, you... And if your storyline is not giving anymore, like, you know, it... it in my opinion, with Leah, it feels like she wants to be on reality show and give whatever she feels like she wants to give. But like some of it, you got to get on board with the gig. And if you mm -hmm. aren't giving and if if sober you isn't giving, then it's time for sober you to say, like, maybe this is not my lane. Like you can't force somebody to keep you on TV when you aren't giving anything. Pretty much. Well, we'll see how this all plays out. Um, so, yeah, it sounds like you like I'm on your side where Caroline will be victorious, and I don't know about Leah. I don't know about Leah. So um, we will see. And there have been other stories abounding about from Love Is Blind, where basically the, <laughs> that they were holding There's them so hostage. Them. It's crazy. It's like a crazy <laughs> reckoning happening right now. Like they were took their passport, their IDs, locked them in the pods. Like, only, and I've heard other stories of uh, shows like Below Deck where they mostly give them alcohol and very little water. And mm -hmm. obviously there was a, a story about assault that the producers had to kind of step in to prevent on Below Deck. Like, eventually this, the producers had to stop it, step in and prevent a guy from going into a girl's room when she was clearly too intoxicated to consent. And he was like, bla you know, blasted as well. So anyways... Mm. A reality TV reckoning is upon us. Um, I'm curious to see how this is going to play out with all of these multiple lawsuits and like how it's going to so, play out on the screen as well, honestly. These reality shows about, about, uh, might end up becoming very boring if they start banning or putting um, parameters around how much alcohol you can serve these people. Well, yeah, because a, a lot of it, and you can tell, like a lot of it of the conflict is predicated on people being drunk drunken behavior yes ma'am and misbehaving and so that's been I the think... case since we all all we had back in the day was the real world <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering if like bethany's call to unionize might you know could help some of this stuff of like hey you can have all the alcohol you want but you got to have water for people too and like adequate food for them to yeah. soak up the alcohol you know what i, I mean and, like flush their systems you can't just keep people like plastered for however long you're Hours. That's not fair. But my thing is like, at what point, I'm sure that someone has had alcohol poisoning throughout the years, through the process of the record, filming these shows. Someone has Likely. had to have. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, the only thing that I had on that list was that the current season that's um, airing on Netflix of Love is Blind, Jeremy mm. was, um, I don't know if he has filed a lawsuit, but basically it came out that he was already engaged to someone else at the time mm. that he was filming this show. Mm -hmm. And so whoever put him on Front Street and alleged that he was in this relationship, he has filed a lawsuit against them and then possibly is figuring out some legal, uh, a rem excuse me, legal ramifications for the show, like what they're responsible for, for showing because of all the things that Love is but Blind this season is kind of crazy. It just, yeah, I've just been watching watching. a little bit of it. Uh, <laughs> so was he engaged? Because that is the absolute defense. Truth is the absolute defense. He's saying that this that relationship ended, but the things that have been flying around on the TikTok streets and just social media in general are saying, you might have said that you weren't in a relationship, but that's not what was happening. Interesting. So we'll okay, see. Well, Again, we'll see all, all of this is about, yeah. <laughs> 
we don't know any of these things to be for certain mm -hmm. outside of the uh, legal docs that have already been put out there for you to read. Yeah. So don't Which drop we'll down leave below. We'll leave all the videos and references down below in the description box. Yes, we are struggling to speak this evening. Anyway, drop down and uh, drop us some comments. Let us know what your thoughts are. And if you have any stories that you want us to talk about in the next one. Bye, friends. Like, comment, Bye. and subscribe. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, 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 I'm not gonna lie,